Joe O'Connell, Sandpiper Pump. Today we're going to show you how to put a wet end kit into an S15 Metallic. Out front we've got some examples of Sandpiper Genuine Parts, wet end kit, air end kit, on the table with our S15, we also have an S20 metallic and an S30 metallic. The rebuild you're gonna see is accurate in man, method, and machine, but for video purposes, some parts of the work performed have been condensed in time. At any point during the presentation, please pause this video until you've completed any phase of the process. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and air end kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. Sandpiper Genuine Replacement Parts, Wet End and Air End Kits provide a bill of material of the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Sandpiper recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of kit installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals or more information, visit us on the web at www.sandpiperpump.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warren Rupp video on safety at sandpiperpump.com. The pump we are using in this presentation has been built new and is considerably easier to work with than a pump that's been used in a process. Additional time may be required in the preparation and separation of parts and components during the rebuild. While the pumps are different in size and flow, the techniques used in the rebuild of the S15 metallic are also applied to the commonality of the S20 metallic and the S30 metallic. These are the recommended tools used with the rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Torque wrench, ratchet, small slotted screwdriver, O-ring pick, 12 inch pry bars, sockets and or wrenches, 1 half inch, 9 16 inch, 5 8 inch, 11 16 inch, 1 and 5 16 inch 6 point socket, 5 16 inch socket head allen wrench. Our S15 wet kit install is going to include diaphragms, check balls, and seats. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start by taking the manifold off. For ease of assembly and disassembly, we're going to use a 3 8 inch um, impact gun. So we're going to start with taking the manifold off. Once you have the bolts removed from the discharge manifold, go ahead and set that aside. You can take the seats and the check balls and discard those. Flip the unit over. And remove the suction side manifold. Loosen all the bolts. Take the manifold and set it aside. Same here, you can take the seats and the check balls and discard those. Set the unit up on its side and you want to take off one of the outer chambers. Once you get the bolts loosened, you can set the outer chamber aside. And we'll take off the diaphragm assembly. Go ahead and break that loose. It may be a little difficult if the pump's been in use for a while. When you get it loose, you'll either get just the diaphragm assembly or you'll get the diaphragm assembly and the rod. Either way, it doesn't matter. Take the bumper and set it aside. Flip the unit over and take the opposite chamber off. Get the outer chamber off, set that aside. Pull the diaphragm assembly out. 
Now we have just the air side center section. Set the bumper aside. Next we're going to remove the diaphragm assembly that's still attached to the diaphragm rod. Today we are using a vise with soft jaws. Soft jaws are utilized to ensure that the shaft is not scarred, scratched, or damaged while it's clamped in the vise. So go ahead and tighten the diaphragm rod and the vise with the soft jaws and remove the diaphragm assembly from the rod. You want to take the rod out and inspect it. You want to make sure there's no deep scratches, cuts, grooves in the diaphragm rod. You may have to replace this. Next we're going to disassemble the diaphragm assembly. You want to take the inner diaphragm plate and put it in the vise. You want to grab hold of the lower part of the inner diaphragm plate. Don't grab up on the radius. And go ahead and remove the outer plate from the assembly. Get that unthreaded and you can throw the old diaphragm away. And repeat the process on the opposite side. Again, grabbing hold of the lower part of the inner plate. Make sure you don't grab up on the radius. Unthread the outer plate from the inner plate. And discard the old diaphragm. Inspect the inner and outer diaphragm plates. Ensure the plates have no sharp edges or scarring on the radius. Plates can be cleaned up with emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Make sure the radius is maintained during cleanup. Replace if necessary. Now open up your wet end kit and set the components out. As we're going to start to rebuild the pump now. Taking your inner plate, again you want to grab it at the lower part of the plate, not up on the radius. Flat face goes upward. Natural bulge of the diaphragm is going to go out. You want to invert the diaphragm so the air side of the diaphragm sets against the inner plate. Then you want to take your outer plate and thread it through the diaphragm and into the inner plate and torque it to recommendations in the service and operating manual. You want to repeat this for the other diaphragm assembly. Reinstall your soft jaws and then tighten the diaphragm rod into the vise. Place your bumper on there and thread one of the diaphragm assemblies onto the rod. And you want to torque this to the rod. You'll find those torque specifications in the service and operating manual. Once you have this assembly, you want to take the assembly and install it into your air side center section. First, you want to apply a little grease to the bore where the U-cup and the bearings are. Do that on both sides. Install your diaphragm rod. Make sure you have your bumper on before you install it. And you want to line up the bolt holes in the diaphragm with the bolt holes in the inner chamber. And we're going to install our outer chamber. Inspect the outer chamber for casting integrity. 
Inspect the machine faces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring, scratches, or material buildup can be cleaned up by using memory paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Ensure the radius on the inside of the chamber is maintained during cleanup. Replace the chamber if necessary. When aligning the outer chamber, be sure that the discharge port faces the nameplate. Go ahead and put in your cap screws and you can tighten those down in a crossing pattern. This is hand tight all the way around. I'm going to flip the unit over now. We're going to install the opposite diaphragm assembly. First we want to make sure that we put our bumper onto our diaphragm rod. And we want to thread the assembly onto the rod. You don't want to thread it all the way down yet. You just want to get it on the rod. We have to invert the diaphragm rod across. So we're going to take a couple of pry bars and we're going to get up under the diaphragm plate. It's pretty important that when you do this, you make sure you get under the inner diaphragm plate and not under the diaphragm. Then reinvert the diaphragm. You want to torque the diaphragm assembly to the diaphragm rod. Find the torque specifications in the service and operating manual. You want to make sure that you line bolt holes in the diaphragm up with the bolt holes in the inner chamber. If you can't do that at torque, always continue to tighten to the next bolt hole, never loosen. You want to keep tightening until you get to the next bolt hole. Make sure your hole alignment is correct with your diaphragm and your inner chamber. Once you have the two assemblies lined up, you can go ahead and reinstall the other outer chamber. Inspect the outer chamber for casting integrity. Inspect the machine faces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring, scratches, or material buildup can be cleaned up by using memory paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Ensure the radius on the inside of the chamber is maintained during cleanup. Replace the chamber if necessary. When aligning the outer chamber, be sure that the discharge port faces the nameplate. To get the alignment, you can install the bolts and tighten them down in a crossing pattern. There are no torque specifications for the outer chamber. This is hand tight. You want to make sure you get the bolts good and snug. You want to flip the pump over to the suction side. Nameplate will be facing down. You can drop your check balls in, install your new seats. Seats are universal, they can go on either way. There is no top or bottom to the seats. Take our suction manifold. We want to inspect the manifold for scarring damage or material buildup. Check the casting for wear. Check the port for thread integrity. Repair or replace is needed. Emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper can be used to clean the manifold up. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Once you get all the bolts in the suction side manifold, you want to tighten those down in a crossing pattern across all eight bolts. I'm going to bring that manifold down level onto the seats. There will be a gap left between the suction manifold and the outer chamber. This is okay. The sealing surface is compressed against the seat. 
You don't want to try to tighten the bolts until you make that gap disappear. You can break the chamber or the suction manifold. Flip the unit over. Go ahead and install your new seats. Again, there is no up and down on the seat. It can be placed in either way. Make sure you set them down in the receiver. Set your check balls down on top of the seats. Then you want to take your discharge manifold and inspect that. We want to inspect the manifold for scarring damage or material buildup. Check the casting for wear. Check the port for thread integrity. Repair or replace is needed. Emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper can be used to clean the manifold up. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Once you have your bolts installed into the discharge manifold, you want to tighten them down in a crossing pattern. Cross all eight bolts. That completes our wet side rebuild of our S15 metallic. If you're doing a complete rebuild, you can also see our air side video. Or for additional information, find us on the web at sandpiperpump.com or contact after sales support at service.warrenrupp at idexcorp.com. Thanks.